good evening friends i think uh, this one of, this is one of the fastest uh, review session we are going to have uh, so this session will be suitable only for those people who wrote uh, niss exam today morning definitely this will not be suitable for uh, people who, who didn't write the exam in the morning so i request you only those who have wrote the exam in the morning to attend this session then only it will be useful uh, yeah i'm checking in another audio it's fine so let us start with the questions a uh, young female with a dysphagia manometry shows air peristalsis distal sphincter pressure is 40 mm and peak pressure is at, at around 26 mm so this case is nothing but an achalasia so the first question is a case of achalasia so the best management for achalasia type 1 and type 2 achalasia undoubtedly it is hellas cardiomyotomy and for this patient we may do a dar fundo application that is the correct answer so if you have any uh, doubts or any controversies there may be definitely controversies from various books so you can post in the chat box i will uh, uh, rectify them in the upcoming uh, other sessions soon but uh, any doubts you have or if you want to add up any other points during the discussion you can always add up those points so the first question in esophagus the answer is hellas myotomy with or without fund application is the correct answer for this first question if it is a type 3 achalasia mentioned we would have gone for poem Yes, everything can be done. Balloon dilatation can be done. Transthoracic also can be done. But these are all not the best method. The best method is always modified Heller's cardiomyotomy. So the second question is on. Uh, we had equal number of questions. I have divided them into parts. Esophagus, page number 1024, Sabiston. And uh, management of high-grade dysplasia as per CETL guidelines for Barrett's esophagus. High-grade dysplasia, what is the treatment? So no doubt it is a clear-cut question. We have to do RFA. And after doing RFA, we have to examine the ablated area by endoscopy after 3 months. So please remember, we have to see the ablated area whether the dysplasia has dissolved or not after 3 months. So RFA, after doing RFA for a high grade dysplasia, we have to give them proton pump inhibitors high dose so that it will heal forming a squamous cell mucosa. Very important lines you would have read in Shackleford or Sabiston. So the second question answer is RFA followed by uh, uh, followed by surveillance. So the third question we discussed two days back about the transthoracic and transhiatal esophagectomy which is false. I told you all complications are very common with transthoracic esophagectomy except subclinical leak is more common with transhiatal. Even clinical leak is more common with transthoracic, subclinical leak is more common with uh, transhiatal esophagectomy. So in this uh, you have to know, I don't, I, I don't know which is the correct choice, but I have covered that area. But whatever is the correct choice, you can post, I will clarify accordingly. Transthoracic esophagectomy has more leak rate, true. THE has less pulmonary complications, true. Transhiatal esophagectomy as well as transthoracic esophagectomy, both can be done minimally invasive nowadays. So both can be done minimally invasive. Side to side stapler technique of esophago jejunal anastomosis has decreased stricture rate so among these four choices all the four are true correct statements i don't know which statement they have changed so the only complication i want you to remember here very important is in transhiatal esophagectomy in transhiatal esophagectomy there is more chances of subclinical leak otherwise all complications are more common with transthoracic side to side stapler will have decreased Stricture rate is 100% correct. So patient, the fourth question is an incomplete recall from the students. I could not get the correct answer. What is given, what is given in the question. So a patient underwent transhiatal esophagectomy. On transhiatal esophagectomy, there will be an anastomos done in the neck. So fifth post-op day, patient develops chest pain. So very interesting point here. Usually a transhiatal esophagectomy, the leak will be coming through the neck. They will develop only swelling in the neck and there will be edema in the neck. But if there is a pain in the chest, it is because, yes, sir, Shanukdai, the side to side stapler has decreased stricture rate is true answer. Side to side is having increased stricture rate means it is wrong. But the question is, if it is decreased stricture rate, it is correct answer. And uh, about the uh, leak, the leak from the esophagus jejunal here can sometimes seep into the chest and can cause collection. So such collections, what we do is we always put an ICD tube. So bilateral ICD is placed, right ICD shows 50 ml, left shows 100 ml. The diet started on third day and fifth day developed pain. So when a patient with a uh, 
transatal esophagectomy done is developing a leak what should i do next is i will always do a ct scan with a oral gastrographin so that is the one test i should confirm whether there is a leak entering into the chest or any other leak in the chest so what is done next i don't know the exact choices but for a uh, uh, let me tell you what we will do for a leak happening inside or inside the chest or something leak going into the chest the first important thing we will do is we have to do ct scan number one ct scan with the oral gastrographin will be done to look for the leak so yes after doing the ct scan if there is a collection significant collection is present which is not coming through the icd tube we have to reposition the icd tube if there is a collection which is not coming properly we will reposition the tube or we will reinsert the tube number two and if there is an obvious leak in the anastomotic area we can do a stent nowadays so covered stent is available nowadays so these are points very clearly this chapter page number 476 this question is taken from if you go through that and read this page number 476 in shackleford you will understand each and every line all the questions in INI set are always a repeat question from direct lines from the books and always they are high yield same areas so not a part of obesity surgery mortality risk score age gender and hypertension is included which is not included so the hypertension is included and uh, we will include dvt also so which is not included is probably there is something else given which is not included please remember that so obesity surgery mortality risk score which is not included is any one of the other things apart from this if there is anything in the choice age is there age above 45 male gender so age male gender bmi 50 and increased deep pain thrombosis hypertension i think the choice had a diabetes so which is not included is diabetes is not included okay that is the point i want you to remember here so answer is this so it's directly taken from uh, bailey and love as well as from uh, other books so the other point is percentage of diabetes resolved in bilio pancreatic surgery yes answer is diabetes very good so answer is diabetes percentage of diabetes resolved in bilio pancreatic surgery after three years so after three years it's a direct table from bailey and love you can see this this bariatric surgery chapter i always tell during our classes to read only bailey and love nothing else needed uh, therefore you go for uh, bariatric surgery percentage of uh, diabetes resolved in bilio pancreatic diversion so please remember bilio pancreatic diversion at three years 80 percent are resolved from diabetes whereas in a sleeve gastrectomy 50 percent of the diabetes uh, remission happens so 50 percent of them uh, have remission in sleeve gastrectomy and in bilio pancreatic diversion 80 percent have remission at three years so very interesting question first time asked a new question about the diabetes remission this is the first time asked question so this uh, this question might be asked here after in exams so please remember this is from bailey and love so duodenal hematoma so nothing to worry this line is there paragraph is there in page number 419 of sabiston duodenal hematoma results by nasogastric tube most common presentation is peritonitis i could again i could not get the proper point but i will discuss you the duodenal injuries so the approach of duodenal injuries depends upon the location of injury and the amount of tissue destruction hematosa hematomas of the duodenal wall will resolve without intervention and are an issue only if they cause go so please remember duodenal hematomas will not cause peritonitis they will only cause go treatment of obstructing hematoma contains of nasogastric decompression initiation of tpn and re-evaluation of gastric emptying after five to seven days if the duodenal obstruction persists after 14 days operative exploration is warranted to evacuate the hematoma evaluate for perforation stricture and associated pancreatic injury very important point hematomas will frequently decompress spontaneously during the mobilization of duodenum and the intestinal wall should be evaluated for injury so duodenal hematomas identified incidentally during laparotomy should not be opened unless there is a concern of full thickness injury so it's a direct paragraph from uh, sabiston the line is directly taken from page number 419 so most common presentation is peritonitis is wrong and duodenal hematomas they present to you with a gastric outlet obstruction so again this question is again a confusing question which station lymph node is not removed in d2 for proximal gastric cancer so d2 for proximal gastric cancer so there is a table in bailey and love very classical table i usually always take this table even for neat pg students 
uh, what are the nodes removed in distal gastrectomy so this is a distal gastrectomy one to nine nodes are removed in a total gastrectomy for a tumor in the proximal stomach we remove all the nodes from one two three four sa four sp four d five six seven eight a eight all these nodes are uh, so develop goo is a correct answer that's correct develop goo if it is there in the option please remember develop goo is another option you should not forget develop goo is true answer so the wrong answer is it most commonly develops peritonitis is wrong answer it's a direct question nothing to read if it is a repeat question you will not worry you just go and read that here after those who are preparing for ini ss exams the areas which are being focused in the exam only has to be read no need to read the same question the same question will not repeat but the same area will get repeated so for a, which station lymph node is not removed for d2 uh, you have to know celiac hepatic proximal splenic supra pyloric all these are given accordingly in this table i don't know what is the option which is not given in that so the nodes not removed in this are uh, up to 11 nodes we will remove up to splenic artery splenic hilum we will remove according to this table so the nodes in the stations 12 to 18 are not routinely removed in a d1 or d2 this is a table from bailey and love so among these nodes which are given here all the nodes are removed proximal splenic supra pyloric celiac hepatic all these nodes are removed but i will verify is there any other uh, 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 referral for this from various other materials and i will update you but accordingly you have to go and read this table in bailey and love figure 67.7 table in bailey and love please go through this table the usual expected question in this is the following station of node is not removed in d2 gastrectomy in antrum see in antrum gastrectomy which node is not removed station 2 node is not removed and station 10 11 not removed 2 10 11 nodes are not removed in distal gastric cancer is a very old repeat question okay uh, yeah i think that must be something else might be i hope the, among this if it is not there only thing that can be missing will be a proximal splenic node so not the distal splenic node proximal splenic nodes might be one another answer in this let me verify and tell from various other sources hepatic celiac suprapyloric nodes are removed according to this table splenic artery nodes can be divided into proximal and distal so in this might be some nodes might be uh, not removed we will verify it and i will tell you uh, verifying the other materials so but usual question is in d2 gastrectomy station 2 is d station 2 10 11 is not removed in antral cancers according to this table in bailey and law this is the old mcq repeat question least likely in intestinal gastric cancer okay intestinal gastric cancer which mutation is least likely i don't know many students have mentioned many mutations according to this page number uh, 1221 the cancer mutation seen in uh, intestinal type of gastric cancer is apc p53 p16 so these are the mutations seen in intestinal gastric cancer apc p53 p16 so which is least common uh, if I go and verify uh, from Sabiston, there is nothing mentioned which is least common. There is not mentioned anything. But microsatellite instability is not so common in intestinal gastric cancers. If there is E. cadherin mentioned in the choice, we will go for it because E. cadherin is most common in distal only, not in proximal. So if there is E. cadherin mentioned, I don't know whether it is mentioned or not. It is common in diffuse type of cancer. It is common in diffuse type. So this is another question which is again a controversy whether... Uh, what choice was there in the question heterogeneity of apc uh, heterozygosity of apc okay we will verify but this is not there in uh, sabiston that such detailed uh, percentage of each one is not there in sabiston we will verify from other materials also so we will have a detailed class after collecting all the questions so that will be uh, that will be definitely going to be useful in later i'm just giving you what are all being asked so that you will be having a fresh mind now of about the various questions so that i will also note the choices for a future discussion so under expression of tgf alpha yes under expression of tgf alpha okay so i will note it we will we will add uh, add or delete all those choices later so apc is having a loss of e cadherin was given means that will be the best answer so loss of e cadherin is there means that will be the best answer because e cadherin is specifically for diffuse gastric cancer it is not seen in intestinal cancer it will not be seen if e cadherin is mentioned in the choice you can go you, you have to never think about anything you have to go for that is why i was not sure what is the uh, choice given in your material 
so some of them are mentioning beta catenin beta catenin and all is not seen in this beta catenin is associated with adenomas adenoma of the liver so this cannot be an answer adenoma liver will only have beta catenin so let us uh, have detailed discussion of this mutation later but what is seen is apc p53 p16 are common mutation seen in intestinal cancer so again comes a repeat question this question has been a multiple time repeat question uh, the following are ulcerogenic causes of hypergastinemia so this question has been asked many times i used to tell all syndromes are ulcerogenic what are the syndromes retained antrum syndrome zollinger ellison syndrome gastric outlet syndrome short gut syndrome okay all syndromes antral g syndrome so whatever syndrome comes they will come under ulcerogenic causes there will be hypergastin and increased acid so increased acid will cause ulcer non ulcerogenic causes are pernicious anemia renal failure gastric cancer very common causes of most common cause of hypergastinemia is ppa okay uh, uh, most common cause of non ulcerogenic causes ppa so if i am missing i think e cadrin people are mentioning it's another question so whatever it is if i am missing some questions you discuss in the whatsapp group about the missed question we will discuss about it also in the upcoming sessions so this is a clear cut question answer is renal failure i think its answer is from the choices you got in your exam it is renal failure is the best answer here so go for c management of duodenal stump leak post distal gastrectomy is accept so what is the management of post distal gastrectomy done duodenal stump leak so duodenal stump leak uh, the choices are there are some there is another option on type 1 uh, intestine so I, I i i think i didn't get that question so you post the question we will discuss it in the next session so duodenal stump leak post gastrectomy what is commonly done duodenal stump blowout usually happens on fourth post op day we know that very well it happens on fourth or fifth post op day it is very commonly seen with billroth 2 operation it is commonly due to afferent loop getting obstructed and malnutrition excessive dissection we discussed this question a few uh, few weeks back about the duodenal stump leak so what we do is in a in a case of duodenal stump leak we will keep a percutaneous drainage of the collection and we will wait for it to get resolved and meanwhile we will keep a nasojejunal tube re exploration is usually not done so the answer is percutaneous cholecystostomy is not the answer i don't know if there is a percutaneous cholecystostomy it is not having any role in that cholecystostomy is not the answer percutaneous drainage is correct percutaneous drainage is correct of the collection if there is a collection of duodenal stump we can do a percutaneous drainage percutaneous cholecystostomy i don't know whether they have done by given by mistake or not because percutaneous cholecystostomy will not be a correct answer immediate re exploration will not be a correct answer also immediate re exploration is not a correct answer so duodenal stump leak is uh, nothing to worry we always face duodenal stump leak three monthly once we get a duodenal stump leak we just put a percutaneous drain if there is no drain kept if already a drain is kept that will be draining the collection and i don't think there is a percutaneous cholecystostomy that might be a typing error by the question setter probably a typing error by the question setter so you have to go for the answer best answer will be immediate exploration is wrong answer expected management so what is whether it is a true or the question is asking except no if it is an except i am asking if it is a one best answer means the best answer is percutaneous drainage with a with a wait and watch that is the best single answer okay so if single best answer is asked means percutaneous drainage with the uh, uh, wait and watch that is the correct answer for this question so please don't forget don't uh, don't worry just go through and read duodenal stump leak in sabiston and shackle food that's all so the point here i am discussing is i want you to know which are all areas being focused by the ini set examiners but because why i am telling this because i have been observing the same exam papers and ini set papers for more than 5 6 years we have all the papers but all the papers the question paper questions will never done will not be done again and again the same question will not get repeated but again and again the same area we cannot read the entire sabiston around uh, 2500 pages and shackle ford 2500 pages cannot be read because ini set exam preparation is little different we cannot read the entire book so we have to use the uh, logic of high yield areas and they have to prepare accordingly that is the purpose of this session so coming to the small bowel chapter only four questions are asked crohn's disease with the ct scan showing obstruction was shown in the image based question 
if the question is showing a short stricture in the ct scan i don't get the ct ct scan if it's a stock short stricture causing obstruction stricture of plasty is the correct answer if there is a long short multiple strictures given in the book multiple short strictures that is better treated by resection and anastomosis that is answer so yeah that is why i am mean, instead of mentioning as percutaneous drainage so naturally we surgeons always speak percutaneous cholecystostomy you know, so the examiner would have the question setter might have typed it wrongly as percutaneous cholecystostomy that might be the reason percutaneous cholecystostomy you just naturally think why should i go and drain a gallbladder for a patient who is having a uh, duodenal stump leak it is not going to resolve it anyhow the pancreatic secretions are going to come out so pan cholecystostomy unwantedly going and dealing with the gallbladder here so that is a wrong typo error probably it is a typo error i am sure okay so there is a question distal to stricture bowel was distended so it's distal to the bowel or proximal to the bowel it is distended so whatever it is if it is a single short stricture better answer is stricture of plastic if there are multiple short strictures we will go for resection and anastomosis okay so please remember this question is again a simple straight forward question this is purely based on the radiological image what you had in your exam so single ct stricture shows the answer so crohn's disease investigation of choice radiological investigation of choice is what so radiological investigation of choice for a crohn's disease is mr enteroclysis because we will be repeatedly doing ct uh, ct scan it will cause radiation assault therefore the better investigation is mr enteroclysis whatever it is when there is an obstruction we will not treat with immunosuppression or balloon dilatation both are not that much beneficial balloon dilatation can be done only for duodenal crohn's disease stricture so not followed answer is uh, the question is asking not followed okay if the question is asking not followed based on the obstruction surgical resection we can do uh, balloon dilatation we can do stricture plasty we can do so balloon dilatation is possible in some places of duodenal strictures in colon some strictures and all we can do balloon dilatation but it will be little difficult immunosuppression at this point of time if it is a chronic stricture will not heal if it is a acute stricture immunosuppression is beneficial so acute strictures this is what sackelford says when you read acute strictures it helps okay acute strictures immunosuppressants and steroids will help so if it is an ileal stricture you cannot put the balloon there ileal stricture no use please remember that is the point i want you to remember here if it is a picture showing you an ileal stricture the answer better answer will be balloon dilatation will be the better answer because that's why i'm asking whether it is what type of stricture was given so with the history of vomiting a heat would be done in the in this setting it was a small bubble single stricture no use of balloon dilatation we can go for a b d so except balloon dilatation is answer okay if it is a small bubble single stricture no discussion at all it is you cannot pass a balloon to the small bubble naturally the discussion is over only for a duodenal and colon strictures we can do balloon dilatation not possible for small bubble strictures so carcinoid tumor of appendix straight forward need pg question it commonly seen in the distal part not in the proximal part it is not seen in the proximal it is seen in the distal uh, lumen okay capsule endoscopy is not done in any cases of stricture crohn's disease stricture you cannot do this and you cannot do it in case of any case of intestinal obstruction so when there is a stricture or obstruction you cannot do capsule endoscopy so it's a clear cut again another question the fourth question pjs picture i don't know whether it is a patient picture or what image image of uh, what is given in pjs picture um, so uh, uh, so don't worry about the question being asked the exam is over i'm telling you, you know one thing you have to you have to be very clear after writing the ins and exam is always the students do this mistake even i was uh, i used to do the same mistake the mistake what we do during after finishing any exam is we will justify whatever answer we mentioned that is no use so whatever you mentioned nobody is going to get concerned about it what is being asked in the key is going to be the final answer so now what can i do whatever happened is happened what should i do is i should now open the page that is why i have done from the afternoon 3 o'clock i have referred all the book and have put the page numbers where you have to go and read now you have to go and read these pages and you will if you go and read these pages you will understand what mistake it was uh, what is the uh, what is the correct question was asked you will now make it therefore whatever answer asked asked in the exam whatever the question 
now nothing is going to change so now it's a time you have to mark these areas in your book take your book whichever you are reading whether it is a shackle food or our uh, our institute notes or doc tutorial notes whatever notes you are using take those notes and mark these areas and mark these questions so when you are reading next time read these topics in depth that is definitely going to help you for the exam so patient with a perioral pigmentation st11 so it is over easy question pjs st11 mutation is stk11 mutation is pjs so that's over simple question okay pigmented spots of patient so patient image it's a patient image of pigmentation in the lips so now coming to colon colon had some num good number of questions 50 year old male had a pain in the left abdomen ct scan showed diverticulitis ct scan showed diverticulitis they didn't mention the grade nothing so when there is no mention about the abscess or collection or plug mon we will consider this as stage 0 diverticulitis so patient had a pain patient had a thickening of the bowel suspected diverticulitis one shot iv antibiotics are given what is the next step if symptoms resolved, you will be shocked to see this line from uh, Sabdistan, page number 1339. A systemic, systematic review and meta-analysis assessing the effect of antibiotic administration in patients with uncomplicated diverticulitis has not shown, yet, shown the usage of antibiotics to accelerate the recovery or prevent complications. So, antibiotics are no use in uncomplicated diverticulitis. Antibiotics have traditionally, traditionally been prescribed to cover colonic bacteria but now it's very clear in new substance there is no use of antibiotic so even um, this point you should not forget and uncomplicated diverticulitis upon recovery it is recommended that patients undergo a colonoscopy after four to eight weeks to exclude malignancy so a patient with a stage zero uh, all except was asked so all except is asked means what's next step if symptoms resolved means better answer is colonoscopy okay colonoscopy what what is options it was all except okay it is all except so about the choices all except it is definitely resection and anastomosis then it becomes an easy question if it is asked as all except then the question is very simple resection and anastomosis is not at all advised for these patients so simple question so the answer will be resection and anastomosis if it is a patient with a clear cut answer so the answer is section and anastomosis is no more needed okay it's no more needed for any patients with ulcerative colitis sorry with the diverticulitis so it's a straightforward question this is again a question from page number 422 intraperitoneal injury of colon not done so this is again a intraperitoneal injury so whichever options you feel are incorrect or you had to be modified I request you all please post in. I have already shared the link of our WhatsApp group where we are going, we are discussing only surgical gastro questions. We will be discussing uh, forever in that group about the INISS surgical gastro questions. And those who are preparing for the future INISS exams will be there in that group only. So please post any doubts you have, any discussion will be further done there. So just for a, uh, for a fast review of what is hap what happened, you just am discussing these questions. So intraperitoneal injury of colon not done as. So I am noting it Raman, Raman J R Reddy. I am noting that choices. So the choices are oral antibiotics, uh, elective colonoscopy. So elective colectomy is not needed. That is the correct answer. Oral antibiotics, IV antibiotics, okay. But what is needed is elective colectomy may be not needed. Elective colectomy not necessary. Okay. So one option was anastomosis has more sepsis rate. Yes, that definitely anastomosis has more septic rate. That is correct. So I am noting the choices. We will discuss in, it in the other things. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. So intraperitoneal injury of colon not done as. So intraperitoneal injury of colon. Sabiston page number 422 says resection and covering ileostomy for anastomosis is not done. This is what given in intraperitoneal injury of colon. Hartman's can be done. Primary resection and anastomosis also can be done if the bubble is if there is no serious uh, thing. And I don't know the fourth choice. If there is a fourth choice, you have to tell me the fourth choice because uh, exact choice I could not recall. But this is a you this is a very practical question. There is nothing special to make uh, mug up in this. If there is a colon injury, what we will do? What do you do in your practice? So uh, you have to think of surgery after stabilization IV and so leave about the diverticulitis question I'm telling you leave this question don't worry so we will discuss you just go through the material and see the answers one by one slowly 
i am telling you don't worry about the choice. you just remember what is being asked you your job is to go back and open this page number in sabiston and read what is there in diabetic letters now itself you are going to read so you know what we used to write this i have written at least seven or seven aims exam some uh, some eight eight pg chandigarh exam during our preparation days so our only job is we, do, we though we prepare or not we go for the exams we write the material we write the no, questions and we will come back with the questions and we will discuss those questions with a group of friends that's all that is what i expect you so don't worry about the questions read and discuss these areas in detail okay so intraperitoneal injury of colon not done is what is the choice i don't know but sabiston says c is not done Re resection with and anastomosis with a covering ileostomy with a covering ileostomy is not done as per sabiston sabiston says there is no use of doing a covering ileostomy in such case in such a situation you go for a hartmans like that covering ileostomy was not there in the option so if there is not covering ileostomy or if there is any mucus fistula mucus fistula is also not needed mucus fistula or covering ileostomy is there we will not do any of these things so so uh, ram ram nod as i chilku is mentioning mucus fistula resection and hartmans correct primary anastomosis correct primary anastomosis has more septic complications correct so the answer will be then the mucus fistula is the answer for this question mucus fistula is the answer for this question that will be the better answer we will not go and do a mucus fistula for a case of obstruct injured colon okay that is wrong answer Yes, resection and anastomosis has more septic complication has more chances of a leak compared to uh, hartmans ileal pouch anal anastomosis which is this is one question i have seen has been repeated three or four times in the past so many so many years exams ileal pouch anal anastomosis which is wrong statement frequency is inversely proportional to the pouch size okay frequently is inversely proportional to yes more the pouch size the less the frequency j pouch there are two types of studies either with the 15 or 20 both had same output therefore now we only do 15 cm j pouch so there is a w pouch is associated with less day and night frequency of uh, day and night frequency of stools s pouch is inefficient in evacuation in comparison to j pouch so the answer is so all are true except primary anastomosis can be done septic complication more common with intraperitoneal injury hartmans hartmans with mucus fistula so hartmans with mucus fistula so so the answer is okay we will see that is actually a practical question it is not there even in any any areas in the book no area is mentioning about that question i will note it so in this question it is all the choice what i have mentioned is correct here so j pouch is commonly done it is a superior to any pouch 15 15 cm is used s pouch is inferior to j and w pouch it is only done when the j pouch could not reach the anus when will i do s pouch when i am doing a j pouch that is not reaching the anus in such case i will do a s pouch w pouch is associated with lower daytime and nighttime frequency of defecation and less use of medication however this benefit is only for short term not for long term that is the most important point so definitely for long term this pouch is not going to be helpful so long term continence and frequency was compared with w pouch w pouch was mentioned so w pouch in long term is no use both pouch configurations at 9 year follow up are more or less same therefore people prefer j pouch only okay this point you should this is again directly directly taken from shackleford there is a deep discussion about this topic in our class material also please go through the material also go through the contents um, in our uh, in our uh, sge material definitely this this topic you will be understanding more deeper there so i have to discuss so many questions so little i'm uh, especially after your exams you will be in a little relaxed mood so i will just go through all the questions whatever choices you feel to be corrected please post in our whatsapp group we will correct it the following is not done in a patient in the 15 bloody stools not improving even on 5 days of iv steroids so when a patient not improves on 3 days of steroids please remember if the patient is not improving on 3 days of steroid uh, we have to go for the next line therapy so there is a table in shackleford page number 1901 saying 
infliximab or cyclosporin are the first line of failure of steroids in severe ulcerative colitis. So this is a definitely a case of severe ulcerative colitis. 15 bloody stools are coming. So not improving even on 5 days of steroids. Shackleford in, uh, in a table mentions cyclosporin and infl infliximab are the first line in ulcerative colitis for induction of the colitis. So we have to induce the colitis. So we have to go for infliximab or cyclosporin. So infliximab all come under adalimumab any one of these drugs. So infliximab generation is adalimumab. So you can go for adalimumab also. So any monoclonal antibody will be used in tofsitinib, vidolizumab. In, uh, uh, I don't know what, what, what drug they are specifically mentioning but Shackleford line is mentioning only these two drugs. Infliximab or cyclosporin. So, uh, Ankit Gangwar, fourth option was W pouch on long term frequency as list frequency. That is what I told you, that is wrong. That is, you have to go with the W pouch on long term is no, no advantage. So, you have to, uh, and my answer for that is W pouch only. This is the answer. I told you, this is the answer for this question. On long term, this is the answer for this question. On long term, it is not useful. So, go for C is the answer in this question. No doubt in that. Okay. In this question, the three C is the answer here. And in this question, the question is uh, not a proper recall. I don't know whether they have asked about any specific drugs. If infliximab is there, that is the correct answer. So the I, I, I hope you have to go for adalimumab as per this monoclonal antibody. The, if we go with the basic monoclonal antibody, so adalimumab will be the better answer for this question, fourth question. So, but I am not sure with the choices. We have to verify from any other recent sources. I will come, not collect me. That was a old concept. Sabiston says, Sabiston was saying, what Sabiston says, if a patient is not responding to any type of drugs, we will go for colectomy or ileostomy. So any type of drug means not only steroids, we will start with steroids. If not steroids are not responding, monoclonal antibody not responding, then only we go for surgery. This is the order, okay. So therefore, the subtotal colectomy is not the correct answer. It will be... Uh, so in Sabiston it is given as tofsitinib. Okay. So I will I will note it. So in Sabiston, tofsitinib is mentioned. But I, I went through Shackleford. In Shackleford 1901, the table so, shows ad, uh, infliximab. So we will note it. Which is not done. Which is not done if there is not a following a patient. Not done means the question is so please remember if it is a not done, the answer is subtotal colectomy. No doubt. Okay. Latest guideline not done is subtotal colectomy. So if the question is asked in the exam is not done means go for surgery. Surgery is not done nowadays. So old concept is we will do surgery when steroids are not functioning. Now if the steroids are not working, go for second line drugs like adalimumab or any other monoclonal antibody. Then only we go for, then also, then also not responding, we go for steroids. Okay. Except after steroids is we have to go for other drugs. Okay. If steroids are not, this is a direct line, direct paragraph. There is a detailed discussion about Drugs patients not responding to this is de detailedly discussed in uh, Shackleford. Definitely surgery will not be done. Please remember this. If no drug, if there is a line mentioned, if no drug is working, then I would have definitely gone for surgery. Because this question is already asked. No drug is responding after 5 days after giving steroids or any other drugs. Then we go for surgery. This is again a line from Sabiston. Okay. Regarding FAP false statement is. So I, I think it's a straightforward question associated with the APC. Budisonide prevents cancer. Endometrial cancer is prominent. 100 polyps are diagnostic. So endometrial cancer is more common with HNPCC. So not with FAP. In FAP, um, endometrial cancer is not so common. So in FAP, duodenal cancers and other cancers are very common. But endometrial cancer is very common in HNPCC cases only. Okay. Cancer involving submucosa, Haggit staging. So, it's a staging of Haggit. Stage 4 is invasion of submucosa. So, please remember, stage 4, cancer involving the submucosa is coming under Haggit staging 4. So, I think this question has been already asked. Yeah, if it is not done, actually, if it, the question is not done, answer is colectomy only, no doubt. Okay, if it is not done means it is question is colectomy. So, Haggit staging is a straightforward question. Please go through that from uh, Sabiston. So, level 4 comes under submucosal invasion. So, program, this is a new update question. Recently asked question from Bailey and Love. I, I, have, I have discussed this in Bailey update. Patients who are having microsatellite instability will be given pembrolizumab. 
okay so pembrolizumab will be given for micro satellite instability cases it is a new update from bailey and rowe 28th edition please remember it is answer is direct question pembrolizumab okay pembrolizumab for msi1 cases any any steroids uh, uh, this is not only for fap the concept is any anti inflammatory will prevent cancer that's all i don't know whether this line is there in any, any place in the book but easiest exclusion is endometrial cancer we have to find out any place whether it is mentioned as budisonide prevents cancer overall uh, overall anti inflammatory uh, things will prevent cancer we will find out whether there is anywhere mentioned uh, budisonide prevents cancer okay so program death one inhibitor is msi this is a simple straight forward question so this is a direct paragraph from uh, bailey and low recently pembrolizumab has been shown to be having a role in msi tumors similarly this is expected again in future question braf mutation patients will have encorafenib the drug which will be helpful for them is encorafenib and map cases benimetinib so these are new drugs updated in bailey and low 28th edition so pembrolizumab is very helpful for msi unstable cases so please remember this question so this is a solitary rectal ulcer syndrome i don't know whether it is a sg question or general question but srs is <coughs> seen anteriorly <coughs> not posteriorly so uh, simple simple answer it is seen anteriorly these are all old pg questions old pg questions transanal surgery is not indicated in more than 40% circumference again if these are pg level questions so i hope you will be correct so mesenteric tumor all are true about mesenteric tumor i am searching the reference will will update after the reference i'll have to if anybody found out the answer in any book for this for this question so in sabeston it is not there any other book had the answer for this yeah srs not correct is srs wrong is wrong is ulcer seen posteriorly okay so i'm telling you that when i started the discussion so i told you those who have attended the exam this this discussion will be useful if you are not attended the exam don't worry we will have a detailed discussion of one by one each questions in future so the answer for fourth is mesenteric tumor i am searching will find out the reference and i will give you with reference later and this image was asked in the exam it's a scalloped liver image so around the liver there is a uh, yeah most of the most of the solid most of the solid are malignant yeah this up this uh, this uh, question itself we could not get in bailey and low sorry in bailey and low and sabiston i am searching from other books also let me find out and i will update you okay so this is a very simple case of pseudomyxoma peritone you can see the pseudomyxoma peritone having a scalloping edge so this is a liver having a scalloped liver ct image so this is very important simple answer this is answer is pseudomyxoma peritone pseudomyxoma peritone is a direct answer for this question pmp so now coming to hepatobiliary part so hepatobiliary part actually will be discussed by dr santosh anand sir but uh, whatever based on sabiston if there are some questions i will discuss whichever questions needed to be discussed from uh, bloom got i will ask dr santosh anand sir to discuss from hepatobiliary part but some questions are very basic questions an unstable patient with a traumatic pancreatic body transection body transection patient is unstable go for distal pancreatectomy with a splenectomy straight forward question okay a patient presents with pain abdomen radiating to the back ct scan shows unresectable pancreatic head mass you can see an unresectable pancreatic uh, i will note it raman ji already i will note the other options also i will find out the reference for that question a patient presents with abdominal pain radiating to back ct shown an unresectable pancreatic mass below Okay, it is so showing an unresectable pancreatic mass below. What is least likely beneficial for this patient? So a patient having pain, so I can benefit him with the celiac plexus block or with the opioids like tramadol, fortvin, or I can give a neoadjuvant chemotherapy and try for resectability. This question is very simply asked about the RAMS. What is RAMS? So radical anti-grade modular pancreatic splenectomy. So radical anti-grade modular pancreatic splenectomy is used for distal tumors not for tumor in the head so i i, I heard the question is is question on head mass so this is a question on head mass rams cannot be done rams cannot be done for head mass rams is for distal or body tumors 
distal and body tumors only we can do rams so trauma whipples is a whipples operation same we don't do the anastomosis trauma whipples is if there is a question on trauma whipples is mentioned it is there it's a where no anastomosis done we will only resect but we don't do anastomosis now we will do anastomosis afterwards it's a damage control surgery trauma whipple is resecting without removing okay so um, distal the, for the first question distal pancreatomy splenectomy is the correct answer second question rams is the wrong answer okay rams cannot be done how can you do a rams for a head mass it is only done for distal and body tumors this question is purposefully meant to make whether you know about rams or not rams is already a old question rams is done for tumors involving the body and tail with the having good lymphatic clearance can be obtained in rams more lymphatic clearance can be obtained so if it is a tumor spleen preserving and all will not be there distal pancreatectomy splenectomy distal pancreatectomy with spleen preserving i don't know whether you are asking for this case or previous case so previous case if there is a spleen preserving we cannot preserve a spleen spleen preserving will not be done why because patient is already unstable you don't know how much time it will take if you practically do a spleen preserving distal pancreatectomy you will never answer this question at all because you cannot preserve a spleen in a trauma case you will be very sick we cannot go and waste time in preserving the spleen okay so ct scan of this case depends purely on the location if the tumor what i heard from the students is it's a head mass if the same tumor is there in the body i would have tried for a rams if it is in the proximal head rams is not possible so this question purely depends upon the proper ct scan image which you are going to give okay so leave it first question the answer is very clear distal pancreatomy splenectomy patient is unstable so we will not do spleen preservation for unstable patients please remember it so this question head mass we will go for only whipples if possible not rams okay rams will not be possible so indication of diagnostic laparoscopy in a pancreatic tumor is a straight forward question from sabiston sabiston says recently there has been some consensus on a more selective use of laparoscopy for particularly high risk occult cases including those with a large tumors 3 cm 100 international units uncertain findings or body and tail tumors the problem starts here there are two choices body and tail tumor is also there size of tumor more than 3 cm is also there so there are three two answers in this question so indications of diagnostic laparoscopy will be um, size more than 3 cm <coughs> see i have not attended the exam <coughs> some of you are answering body and tail some of you are answering head i am telling you again now nothing can be changed whatever you have answered is gone now it's time you should go and see ct images of pancreas where will be the mass in head where will be the mass in body just leave what happened leave it by now justifying anything we are not going to get a score whatever happened leave it but understand the concept i want you to remember the concept even for this question diagnostic laparoscopy the both answers are there in sabiston ca 99 more than 100 Uh, large tumors more than 3 cm body and tail tumors is also there that is very important you should not forget this question is very important for your exam so this is straight forward question so from there are multiple points about the size is mentioned i will go for more than 3 cm as the correct answer here so i don't know whether this question is asked in the exam or not the dual procedure is dash there is a question like this if there is a question like this answer is distal so this is one of the fastest recall we are doing the first time in the sg exams because uh, most of the students have helped in our whatsapp group they have posted most of the questions so i could make a fast recall but it is not a perfect recall i am knowing that uh, but we will do a perfect recall soon distal pancreatectomy splenectomy with the pancreatico jejunal anastomosis is the correct answer of dual procedure is asked means this is the answer what is dual procedure means it is done for chronic pancreatitis it is done for chronic pancreatitis those days involving the distal body and tail distal body and tail cases if there is a chronic pancreatitis or stricture we will go for child dual procedure this actual name is child dual procedure which is distal pancreatectomy with the splenectomy with the pj anastomosis is the correct answer for this so this question intraoperative intraoperative picture of whipple shown here 
this question has been a multiple time question I, I heard most of the students have mentioned the computer image was very 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 bad but I will tell you this question will be asked very commonly only for left renal vein this is not the first time this question is asked this question is a very commonly asked why you are question also so this question will be very good it, if there is asking a end or longitudinal it is a end pj anastomosis it's not uh, if i insert it into this like this if i insert the if i insert this thing if i insert this bowel like this inside it will become original pusto it is a original pusto if i insert it like this if i do it only in the end it is known as child dual okay it's a child dual only so it is it's an end anastomosis very very important question it is not long it is not longitudinally opening it is only done in the end to end pj that is a correct answer raghavendra is correct that's a perfect answer end to end anastomosis correct answer intra of picture of whipples is shown here what is marked structure so what is marked structure so two questions are very commonly asked by this uh, examiners by this examiners two questions will be very commonly asked the questions asked by these examiners are one is about the intraoperative whipple's image always they will ask you this left renal vein only they will only mark this so definitely this is not a mbbs exam to ask you ivc i am telling you they won't come and ask you what is ivc either they will ask you left renal vein or they will ask you sma only these two structures will be asked as a pinned image for ss exams you have to observe and answer it is uh, left renal vein will be the correct answer because it is going behind the portal vein or smv so the answer is left renal vein only i am sure they would they will never ask this ivc so those are as, as asked as ivc i am sure they won't ask ivc and similarly splenic vein and all you will not see during whipples in whipples splenic vein will not be observed very closely in a proper bed it will be seen joining with the smv at the neck of pancreas so that will not be the answer following surgeries the following surgeries are used in chronic pancreatitis except so asab operation is a devascularization operation done for varices it's a devascularization operation like sugiura so like sugiura it is a devascularization operation partington rocail is the partington rocail is a modified pusto operation okay hooking ivc is also possible we can do sometimes they will hook for liver transplant purpose not during a uh, case of uh, liver of uh, whipple separation that we will not go and uh, hook the thing okay this answer here is hasab operation hasab is not the operation done for this case glucagonoma not true is it's a straight forward simple question it is not common in it is not equal in male and females it is directly taken from bailey sabistan page number 958 every line is there in sabistan 60% malignant uh, most common in body and tail in dermatitis dementia said depression dvt are the features of glucagonoma it is a feature of glucagonoma high risk ipmn are all features imv was not was an option inferior mesenteric vein cannot be seen during whipples so it will not be seen in whipples so th th there is no question on whipple so intra picture of whipples is shown was what they told they, they just showed the intra picture okay okay they showed the intra picture so but usually whipples will be asked and there will be always a question asking about left renal vein this we usually uh, stress during the interviews because during interview they will ask you the same question so glucagonoma is most common in females high risk features of ipm and again it's a pg level question already asked the high risk features are main duct more than 1 cm jaundice mural nodule so this is the answer so surgery done for malignant obstructive jaundice okay so this is a surgery done intra op picture of surgery done for malignant obstructive jaundice so that is no doubt it is going to be a whipple's only if you have seen renal vein it is whipple's only so in this are all except lymph nodes lymph nodes will not come under this category of high risk so lymph nodes high risk features will be only main duct more than 1 cm mural nodule 5 mm jaundice it's a direct line from sabistan page number 1549 please go through this splenic artery aneurysm resection is advised for what size so this is a very interesting question again so splenic artery aneurysm is indication for treatment is symptomatic aneurysms aneurysms more than 2 cm so um, uh, and pregnant patients and those who are having increased not associated with increased rupture or calcification is one which is not associated with increased rupture okay 
So please remember this patient. This, this is actually not taken from uh, Bailey, no? it is taken from internet. So among the sizes, the size criteria, if it is 2 centimeter, that is correct. Size criteria, it is 2 centimeter is correct. Pregnancy is also correct. So if there is pregnancy, that is also correct. So I don't know what is asked in the choice. Resection advice sizes, you have to be uh, clear with the choice so that we can go with that. Okay. Pregnancy mentioned, I don't know whether it is mentioned or not, I don't know. Some, in the recall, some students have mentioned pregnancy. That is why I have mentioned it. If it is not mentioned, go for 2 cm. Splenic vein, we have to go for. Splenic artery aneurysm, we have to go for 2 cm. So, not develops from dorsal pancreatic duct. It's again all this. I was actually, I was wondering there will be so much of questions from hepatobiliary, from bloom guard. New edition has come. So, they will be updating so many points in the uh, bloom guard. But nothing, no question was there from bloom guard level. All the questions are there in Sabiston or even in uh, Bailey and law. Most of the questions are even in there in Bailey and law. Not develops from dorsal pancreatic ductus, uncinate duct. So, this is a very classical question. You can see this is a dorsal bud. From the dorsal bud, the main duct, you can see what is developing from the dorsal bud. The major duct of Virsang is developing from the dorsal bud and minor duct of Santorini is also developing from the major, from the dorsal duct. So, uncinate process duct is derived from ventral bud. So, the answer here is, so only sizes means you go for 2 cm, okay, only sizes means you go for to centimeter. I don't know. I'm telling you. See, there are so many. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know why there is a confusion among the students who appeared for the exam. Some students are mentioning it is asked. Pregnancy is mentioned. Some are not mentioning. Not mentioned. So, the better answer here is 2 centimeter. If pregnancy is there, it is also it is also an indication of surgery. Okay. Both are indications of surgery. Not develops from dorsal bud is uncinate duct. Uncinate duct is nothing but the major duct. Uh, the, the major duct which is going towards the uncinate process is not developed from the dorsal bud. Okay. Accessory pancreatic duct or minor duct, it is actually a minor duct of Santorini is derived from dorsal bud. Yeah, intervention to be done when the aneurysm is more than 2 cm. Yes, we can do coil embolization or surgery, whichever you can do, both are uh, advised options. 45 years old underwent laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Biopsy report is T1B N0 with a negative margin. So, this question is going to be again another confusion for you. What will you do next? I don't know whether the choice is mentioning extended cholecystectomy. If there is a choice of extended cholecystectomy, this is a 45 years old male. What Sabiston says, read this line. For those penetrating the muscularis but not the deeper connective tissue or serosa, classified as T1B lesions, Cholecystectomy may be sufficient as long as the margins are negative, although this remains controversial. With the T1B lesions and perineural lymphatic and vascular invasion, the likelihood of nodal disease increases significantly. Therefore, extended cholecystectomy is generally recommended for all patients who are medically fit. See the new line from Sabiston update. So, T1B Sabiston update is saying you can do surgery for those patients. Okay, so young page, uh, so leave about the splenic artery aneurysm case, splenic artery aneurysm more than 2 cm pregnancy, uh, we have to operate. If there is calcification, no need to operate. That's all. You remember this from this point of time, you remember calcified aneurysm, no treatment needed, whatever the size it is. Non-calcified aneurysm patient is in the uh, pregnant age group or more than 2 cm, we will operate. Okay, just remember it. Option is mentioning CT, if option is CT with extended cholecystectomy, that will be the correct answer in this question. CT with extended cholecystectomy is the correct answer as per new subsystem line is there directly. Therefore, extended cholecystectomy is generally recommended for all patients who are medically fit. That's the answer for this question. Okay. Indications of bilioentric drainage. These are questions from Bloomgott. Indications of bilioentric drainage except, I think this is a question on except. So, stone in the right hepatic duct, stone impacted at the papilla, CBD more than 2.5 cm. Stones uh, in the right hepatic duct is not an indication of CDD. It is not a meaning we have to go for CDD. So, stone in the right hepatic duct is not an indication of CDD. So, other things when the bile duct, so when will you do CB, C, C, CDD? CDD is mainly indicated when the duct is more than 12 mm dilated. When there is 12 mm dilated or impacted papilla. 
or ampullary strictures. These are some of the indications for bilioentric drainage. So that's that's this this question will be discussed. Uh, uh, this question will be discussed by Sandosh Anand sir because this question is from Bloomgard. We will be discussing this in the future discussion. Similarly, false about cholidocal cyst. There are some more questions which are actually taken from Shackle Sabiston as well as Bloomgard. I, I, I could not properly take out those answers. False about cholidocal cyst. There are two questions. I don't know whether these are same question or different question. One is false about cholidocal cyst. Another is anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction related question. So anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction. You have to remember what is this? This, this being a repeated area question from Sabiston. So, which are all types of cholidocal cyst which will be associated with anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction? So, this is very simple question. Type 1. Type 1 will be associated with anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction. Type 2 will be associated with anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction. And 4A. 4A will be, sorry, 4B will be associated with anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction. So, not associated. What are all not associated? So, not associated are type 3, type 4A and 5 are not associated with anomalous pancreatic or biliary junction. So, this point I can only tell and this only 1, 2, 4B have risk of cancer. So, this is one concept which is very clearly explained in, um, so it is not right hepatic duct, so it is left hepatic duct, okay. So it does not only drainage. So uh, this is not biliary entry drainage. It is only a drainage. So then what? Anyhow, drainage is uh, drainage means it is only a. Uh, will you think it is an ERCP related question? I don't, I don't think a drainage means. So stone in the mid CBD CBD diameter. Uh, stone in the mid CBD of 8 mm size and stone of 1.5 cm. So, relative contraindication, stone of size 1.7, 1.5 cm and above is a relative contraindication now, but it can be broken by the ERCP. So, the best answer is stone in left hepatic duct, we will not remove by bilioentric drainage. That is not removed by bilioentric drainage. Yes, it, they just mentioned type 4 or, a, or not A or B. I don't know, I'm telling you these questions and I have, I have to get the proper recalls. I'm waiting for the recalls. False about cholidocal cyst. Most common type is type. Is there two questions? One is on cholidocal cyst, another on anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction. If there are two questions, these are the two different questions. Uh, I can only tell the concepts. Cholidocal cyst is uh, associated with pancreatitis in uh, 20 to 30 percent cases. It is true. It is type 1 which is most common. And anomalous pancreatic biliary duct junction is seen with type 1, 2, 4, B. And they have the risk of cancer. No cancer risk is seen with, is seen in other types. Okay, seen in other types like uh, 3, 4, A, 5 and all are not associated with any cancer risk, these cases. So, there are two different questions. Okay, we will please post the correct recall question so that I can uh, understand and I can find out the reference to from uh, Bloomberg. These questions are taken from Bloomgard only. Definitely these questions are from Bloomgard. Symptomatic cholelithiasis also is from Bloomgard. Patients who get first attack, 30% have only one episode. Yearly symptomatic, wrong statement is. So yearly symptomatic cases actually 2% or less only. It's only 1% to 2%. Many patients experience symptoms, uh, complications before getting symptoms is wrong. It is not correct answer. Most of the patients will have symptoms before getting the complications. So, before getting complications, they get symptoms. Okay. Okay. Noting that there are two questions I am noting. Don't worry. MRCP, there is actually a delay from what I am speaking and uh, you are answering. No, there is a delay. Around 5 minutes delay. So, I cannot, if, if it is a Zoom, we will not have a delay. But in OBS software and YouTube, we will be having some delay. So, whatever I am telling, after some time only it is reaching you and whatever you are posting, it is reaching me after some time. MRCP image, CBD stricture 8 months post lab cholecystectomy. Image of MRCP was shown with a hilar stricture I heard. The question recall was hilar stricture with a proximal dilatation. So the answers will be A and B both will be correct. I don't know the other options. If you can tell me the other options, I, I will note. Um, so I request you friends, please post these biliary questions are not properly recalled in our WhatsApp group. 
so whoever is there in our whatsapp group of sg group uh, surgical gastroenterology preparation group so please post the proper recalls of these questions of uh, gallbladder system we will discuss those questions in the whatsapp but for hilar hilar stricture we will lower the hilar plate we might be doing a pre operative biliary drainage if it is if there is more than 15 mg per deciliter if it is a more than 15 mg per deciliter we might be needing a biliary drainage but we need a dilated duct for we need a dilated duct for anastomosis so sometimes we will operate without biliary drainage also 30% will have no further attack is correct answer 30% of them will not have no any further attack so will first attack 30% have only one episode is correct answer it is correct answer so we will discuss these questions uh, i will ask dr sandoshanan sir to discuss with the proper references just i will tell you the other questions which are asked resection of hcc is not advised for which cases so hepatic venous pressure gradient when it is more than 16 we cannot operate we have to reduce the pressure gradient we cannot resect in this situation that is answer for this question so 6 cm without cirrhosis 10 cm pedunculated mass 4 cm tumor in a child d and all we can resect but hepatic venous uh, Uh, HC, H, hepatic venous pressure gradient more than 16 is a contraindication for surgery and i think this image was not clear in your exam so probably they have asked a question on operation on what surgery was done it is a distal splenectomy was there and there is a shunt shown here so probably it is a linton shunt from the image so distal uh, uh, it's a proximal splenorenal shunt image was asked there i was thinking it so fibro scan for biliary cirrhosis will be done that is correct answer that should be done fibro scan for biliary cirrhosis please remember that will be correct answer that will be done that is done that is correct that will be done pre operative ptbd look at gallbladder specimen exposure of leg left, left duct require hilar plate uh, uh, yes hilar plate lowering for left pedicle that are all is correct so look for gallbladder specimen how can we look for the gallbladder specimen already surgery over no 8 months back post lap cholecystectomy i don't know how can we look for the gallbladder specimen at this point of time so this question if it is asked it is a psrs and if this question is asked in the ct scan of the liver this again a repeat question usually they will ask question of middle hepatic vein i don't know what is asked in your exam usually they will ask you in aims exam this vein what is this so this is a middle hepatic vein usually they ask i don't know what is asked for you from a normal contrast ct liver they will usually ask middle hepatic vein okay middle hepatic vein will be asked so this hepatobiliary don't don't worry we'll ask we'll be discussing again uh, dr sandosh aran sir will be discussing i'll be submitting this paper to him he will discuss once the proper recall is being done so another anomaly of the angiogram this is a superior mesenteric and aortic angiogram sma from the sma you can see the replaced right hepatic artery coming so this is left hepatic artery and this is if there is a right hepatic artery is also seen in this image for example in this image if you are having a right hepatic artery also we will call it as aberrant accessory but in this i heard the student told there is no right hepatic artery in the image only this was there so if it is only there it is replaced right hepatic artery so the answer is replaced right hepatic artery okay that is a replaced right hepatic artery no this this uh, appearance of fatty liver on image and all i have images to be discussed so some questions we are uh, i have not yet completed the questions just i will tell you the questions we will discuss about those questions uh, i will ask dr sandosh anand sir to discuss appearance of fatty liver on image is uh, liver image is one question 35 years old female with a pain abdomen 3 into 3 cm mass showing hyperansia enhancing nodule with a central scar is fnh afp is normal so the next step in a case of fnh if it is an fnh we will observe not i don't know whether there is another question of fnh fnh there are two questions answered i could i want a proper recall components of meld score includes creatinine bilirubin inr and uh, and sodium also is included now albumin is not included liver cell adenoma pregnancy is safe in less than 5 cm size progresses fast in males bleeds in 25% so more adenomas more risk of bleeding so these questions i want a proper recall because i couldn't get the proper recall some recalls are self filled by me but behavior of liver cell adenoma during pregnancy has been unpredictable and resection before a planned pregnancy is recommended so 
pregnancy before pregnancy they should we should advise them to undergo resection because there is more chances of rupture psrs shunt operation not done in very simple question it is for butcheri syndrome butcheri syndrome we will not do a butcheri syndrome we will not do a psrs shunt we will only do a side to side all other cases ehpvo ncpf zero and all we will do a psrs shunt but why it is not done in butcheri syndrome is because there is a Uh, i will see the whatsapp group and i will update the questions so don't worry so the answer psrs shunt will not be done for butcheri syndrome because patient is already having a hepatic vein thrombosis the blood will not flow and the patients will develop liver cirrhosis so answer is a ehpvo nc ncpf we will do psrs shunt so this hepatobiliary questions whichever you feel proper choices you post me i will ask dr sandosh anand sir to discuss about them most common indication of small bowel transplant is ischemia only the, the pity situation is only three questions came from transplant liver transplant methods to reduce bleeding are all except head low is wrong we have to raise the head okay not head low head low will cause increase the central venous pressure so we will little have a head up position not head low head low position order of anastomosis i hope you know the answer already we order correct order of anastomosis is ivc portal vein hepatic artery bile duct this is a correct answer order of anastomosis and this is a previously asked question so sometimes we will do psrs in cirrhotic patients when they come to you with a severe varices not always done so which is where it is not done the better best answer is butcheri syndrome cirrhosis patients who are severely having bleeding some situations like child a patients we might need for this thing okay medical gastro recall this is surgical gastro recall not medical gastro this is a recall from inas surgical gastro so i think these are the questions discussed around uh, 60 to 65 questions we got it uh, including some general part but general part i will be discussing later hepatobiliary will be discussed by dr sandosh anand sir please post the uh, hepatobiliary questions in the group so that we will have a detailed discussion but these questions after completely we get the choices and other things we will share with you so don't worry so thank you all relax you have been writing preparing for the exam for the past many days so general surgery questions we will discuss hiv patient with cd4 count and other adrenal vein samples and all we will discuss from uh, later that is not urgent no because it has to be discussed before neat tests so sg questions you have you should not forget that is why i am discussing immediately so that you have to mark those questions in your book so now you have to take your shackle ford and sabiston and mark all these questions for the next two days whenever you get a time just go through those books and mark those questions definitely they will be helpful uh, even if you become a surgical gastroenterologist in this uh, in the in this upcoming exam you are going to be asked in interview the same questions uh, that is the reason i am discussing it immediately if you are getting selected around 15 to 20 candidates will be selected for interview in the interview the same questions will be asked is there a question on apple by procedure asked so any other question missed please rem please remember and post any missed questions i i will discuss them also in future thank you all thank you friends thank you all see you in another session soon after complete preparation and updating the choices we will discuss soon okay so all the general 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 surgery questions we will discuss like this transplant drugs all those things we are going to discuss separately in another session this is pure surgical gastroenterology session please go through this video again okay thank you